guys, Chris at Island Tech Productions here. So I just wanted to give you guys five tools to use when filming with your DJI Spark. Uh, the first one is using your metering tool. If you have never used them, basically you have a, a minus two, one, zero, one, positive one, positive two. That's your exposure. So when you're doing film, you want to generally expose for the film to the right of the zero. So between the zero and one, anything above one, in my opinion, with the Spark, just because of the sensor size, you realize that everything gets blown out. Similarly, if you go below the zero, there's going to be a lot of dark areas. So just keep that in mind when filming with your Spark. Make sure that you're shooting between zero and plus one as far as the exposure for the metering. Um, if you don't want to use that, step two, use your histogram. The histogram will, is this little bar. You can turn the setting on. And essentially, what it'll look like is two lumps or humps. On the left side to the right side, that's going to be your exposure. So if you're on the left side, pretty much is the dark. If the humps or the graph is pushing towards that side, that means you got to bump up your bump up your ISO or change shutter speed to raise that up. If you go on automatic, you'll definitely see them fluctuating around, but it'll generally float around zero. That's what the DJI Spark wants to do. But if you do it manually, then you definitely want to be in the middle of two. Try to uh, avoid spikes, high peaks, and stuff like that. So number three, use your zebras. You know, overexposure kind of deal. I think they're geared for 80%. If you see them, too much of them, uh, let's say you're shooting for the sky and zebras appear, basically you won't see clouds. It'll just be white. And that goes for if you're by a bright light like right here or here the that'll utilize that setting it'll prevent you from um, overexposing uh, making sure that you know your background is in check and whatnot you can always raise it in post number four which should have been number one actually shoot in manual mode people are like oh I don't know how to shoot in manual or whatnot with those tools I told you uh, specifically you can expose for it. So if you're not used to it, play around with it. Uh, any camera and whatnot. For the Spark, I would just leave it on automatic mode and then, you know, look at a scene and look at what settings they keep and then try to match that. Flip over to manual mode. Most of the time I fly during the day, so I'm going to fly at 100 ISO and then I adjust the shutter speed because that's the only thing you can adjust. Account for the final scene or where I'm going to be mostly at. Yes, you can fix it in post, but it's easier if you shoot it right the first time. And then number five, Use those grid lines. Some may think, oh, those are fancy, you don't really need them, they're in the way. I would use the grid lines with the X across them, so it also shows you the center point. If you stick with rule of thirds, as far as shooting a scene, shooting people, you know, lining people up on the third, or filling up a third or two thirds of the section, it'll make it that much easier when you're, it's called composition. So lots of tutorials out there. I usually generally use those five settings. One, use the metering tool to determine how much, if you're over or underexposed. Two, use the histogram to see where your darks and the lights are heavy. You want to stay primarily in the middle. Number three, use the zebras to see what's overexposed. Number four, uh, shoot in manual mode. Number four, definitely shoot in the manual mode. And number five, use rule of thirds, the lines on the app themselves to, you know, help compose your film. Um, again, it takes practice. I can go into each one individually if you want to. Leave a comment below uh, on what tools you primarily use. I actually use all five when setting up for a shot. Hence why I'm very selective when I shoot, making sure each shot counts. You know, shoot with a purpose. Uh, that always helps me. Each one of the rules I said are meant to be broken. But for the most part, they're my general tools or settings that help me make the most of the DJI Spark. You know, it doesn't have color profiles, it doesn't have all this and that, but again, it's the person behind it. For the Spark, it's really critical that you focus on those tools to make the best uh, of what limited tools you actually have with it, which is actually a lot, because DSLRs, that's exactly how you shoot. Um, hopefully you found that informative. Leave them a comment below on what tools you like to use. Same with the Phantoms or Mavics. I'd like to know if there's any additional tools I'm missing that help you shoot, become a better shooter, filmer, I'd like to know. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. Like this, click the like button below. And as always, uh, subscribe. I greatly appreciate you guys tuning in. It just means a lot of support to me, so thank you very much for that. I hope to bring you more content, and always have a good day, guys, and mahalo plenty.